The following is an excerpt from Reclaiming the Sacred, Healing Our Relationships with Ourselves and the World, by Jeff Golden. All rights reserved. Every Ancestor in Every Breath I am deeply grateful to Joanna Macy for her many gifts to the world, which include the guided activity, Harvesting the Gifts of the Ancestors, which can be found in her book Coming Back to Life, co-authored with Molly Brown. The following was entirely inspired by and adapted from that activity. We are about to take a journey back in time. Not so far back by the scale of the universe or this planet, but very far back in human terms. If you're able to close your eyes for the next 30 minutes or so for this guided experience, I highly recommend it, but it's not necessary. We start with this moment you are in right now. Wherever you are, whatever time of day it is, whatever time of year. And now, imagine yourself moving back through your experiences of this day. And now back to your waking up. Now, evoke some of your experiences from the last week. And now, the last month. Move back a season. And another. and another. Move through the entire last year, through the last cycle of our planet around the sun, remembering some of the major experiences, and perhaps a few small, quiet moments. Speeding up now, move back through the span of your adult years. Consider briefly the major milestones, so many things you probably couldn't have imagined when you were young, some that perhaps you could. You adapting, striving, collapsing, rising, seasons, years, days, nights. Move back into your early adult and teenage years, different thoughts and feelings, a different body, a different sense of yourself, your struggles, and delights. Consider some of the places you lived and spent time where you found refuge and challenge. Recall some of the people Now, move back through your childhood. You, absorbing so much, delighting, surviving. You doing your best every day depending on the circumstances and your hopes and needs and abilities. Your body is getting smaller and smaller until you climb up onto things in this adult-sized world, hold on to adult-sized things with both hands. Now, you are so small, you are carried in arms, 
others clean you and keep you warm and feed you. And now, return to the moment you were born, your passage into the larger world, and keep going beyond. You are now back in your mother's womb, the warmth of your mother's body, the sounds of your mother's voice and heart vibrating through the ocean around you. Your body is simplifying fewer and fewer cells until you are just one cell. And then you are two cells not yet joined. Whatever your relationship with your biological parents, whether you even know them, their long lines of ancestors are yours as well, and you may continue to follow them. Or if you feel a deeper connection with other parents or other people who played a more significant role in your life, their ancestors are yours also, and you can choose to follow their lines. Either way, I will refer to their parents as your grandparents. It doesn't matter whether the relationship is biological or not. Whether you know anything about these people's lives, it doesn't matter. Follow these parents, or significant people, back through the years of their lives. Follow them into their own young adulthood and adolescence, as they also make their way in the world as best they can, given their own circumstances and hopes and needs and abilities. This is a time before you existed in your current biology, but there was a spirit of you carried in these people, an energy, appearance, inclinations. You are rooted in their lives. Move back with them into their childhood, the people and places, their daily lives and significant experiences. and back to the time when they were carried. And now, the moment they were born. And beyond. Into the lives of your grandparents. And now, speeding up further, notice the changing world around you. No internet, no cell phones, Soon, no satellites or rockets. Into the lives of your great-grandparents and your 16 great-great-grandparents. No antibiotics, no television, no planes, no radio. And back another generation and another. No cars, no electrical bulbs. Very soon, we are in the time before industrialization, with its steel and machinery and immense appetite for land and raw material. And then we leave behind European colonization and its violence and destruction and transformation of so many people and places. Many, if not all of your ancestors, were deeply affected by this and involved in different ways. And yet, in the blink of an eye, none of that exists yet. Very soon, countries don't even exist. And then, no printing presses, no guns, no eyeglasses. As we speed up our journey, following the lines of your ancestors, soon the Mongol Empire is behind us, and then Muhammad, and Christ, and Confucius until, by the Gregorian calendar, we reach the year 500 BCE. Even though we actually left the Gregorian calendar behind when it was invented a thousand years later in 1584, you now have roughly 65,536 14th generation great-grandparents in the world, every one of them directly linked to you today. Another 500 years, and there are no pyramids in the Americas. 1,500 years beyond that, none in Africa. 
Five hundred more, and there are no cities at all. The Buddha is now behind us. Another seven hundred years, and there is no writing. And so everything before this is considered by later humans prehistory. But there is so much more. Another two hundred years, and there are no wheels. Five thousand five hundred years before that, there is no metalworking. Another one thousand years, and there is no agriculture anywhere. It is also around this time that your ancestor lines have spread so wide that every human alive today shares the exact same ancestors as you. Every human alive at that time either has no descendants alive today or they are an ancestor to every human alive today. To be clear, we are only 4% of the way into our journey of the human story. This means that for the remaining 96% of our journey, every one of our ancestors was a forager, and we all share the same ancestors. If we were to take a mere five seconds to acknowledge each of our generations of ancestors from this point until we arrive at what people today think of as the dawn of Homo sapiens, it would take us 24 days nonstop. But I have a schedule to arrive in about 30 seconds, so let's skip the formalities and pick up our pace. 480 generations per second. About 20,000 years ago, the first people arrived in the Americas. 40,000 years ago, the first people arrived in Australia and Europe, still engulfed in the Ice Age. It was around that time that some people started wearing shoes, meaning, as we continue back in time, every step our ancestors took, their feet were directly on the earth or plants. Around 70,000 years ago, the human population was reduced to a few thousand people. Around that same time, give or take 10,000 years, the first significant numbers of people migrated out of Africa. We are still only 25% of the way into our journey, but we are scheduled to arrive right now, so in one final leap, let's span those remaining 230,000 years. We have circled back around the sun 300,000 times, and we have traced back some 15,000 generations of ancestors. This is the point when people from our time mark the beginning of Homo sapiens, meaning these ancestors already had the same general anatomy and inherent capacities as us today. Of course, there is no precise moment when our ancestors suddenly became humans as we know ourselves. The changes in physiology occurred over massive periods of time, and many of the things we associate with being human go back much further than 300,000 years. We've been building shelters for at least 400,000 years, and controlling fire for at least 800,000 years. It has been suggested that people living 1.3 million years ago already had the language ability of a six-year-old today, meaning they could speak roughly 2,600 words and understand between 20,000 and 40,000 words. We've been using tools for over 2.6 million years. Casting our gaze still further back in time, we have some 65 million years of primate ancestors before our human ones. We have 150 million years of mammal ancestors before that, and some 3.5 billion years of all our other ancestors before the mammals. At some point in the earliest periods of life, there was our last universal common ancestor, a single living creature that is an ancestor to everything alive today. Before we begin our return journey forward in time, let us acknowledge and honor these ancestors and all that we have inherited from them going back to the very first life and even further back to the very wellspring of the universe. Cosmologist Brian Swimmer writes eloquently,
The elements were bestowed upon us by the stars, the complex compounds given to us by the young earth, the informed sequences of the genes by the microorganisms, our limbs and organs by more recent life forms, and the linguistic symbols carrying our thoughts and feelings by the human venture. We could not see without the work of those who helped shape the eye, could not hear without the work of those who helped shape the ear. The universe created these gifts, lavishing them upon us. Our first and deepest response is infinite gratitude. You might take a moment to express, in quiet words or with a gesture, your gratitude to these ancestors, your earthly forebears, and the living universe. And now, let's bring our attention back to the moment we left off, 300,000 years back. We are in Africa, the birthplace of humans. While our ancestors would not have thought of themselves as a new species, somehow boundaried from their grandparents and beyond, let's allow ourselves some of the thrill of what we, looking back, can nonetheless appreciate as a turning point, a vague beginning of the human story. With that, let's begin our return journey. And as we move forward through time, we're going to consider some of the gifts you have inherited from your ancestors, all of the experiences they lived, the wisdom they held, the physical and personal traits that are present in you through them. Let's start with two gifts that you have received from every single one of your ancestors. They come from every one of your ancestors because every one of them, going all the way to the beginning of life 4.5 billion years ago, was a survivor. Spanning the vast range of lives they led, who and where they were, despite the sometimes crushing adversity and challenges they faced, every one of your ancestors survived at least long enough to pass on life to another generation. Receive this legacy of survival that lives within you, the skill and resilience, the knowledge and intuition, the critical support of family and community. Similarly, let's acknowledge the incredible wisdom and endurance of your ancestors' bodies. Every second of every day of their lives, in countless miraculous and complex ways, their bodies sustained them in life and health. Every one of your ancestors survived the passage from the womb into the larger world. And within every generation of your ancestors, there were those who also went through the fire of birthing new life. Receive from your ancestors' bodies these deep wells of wisdom and endurance, the lived experience crossing over through water and fire. For the vast majority of your ancestors, their lives were characterized much more by being than doing. Their lives were intimately woven with the cycles of the seasons, the stars and the moon, the cycles of the weather and the plants and the creatures around them, the cycles of their own bodies. Receive from your ancestors their lived experience of being, of presence, of the vastness of time and space. Your ancestors learned lessons from all of these relations, the plants and animals, the earth and sky. They knew a vast range of uses for different plants, medicinal, food, ceremonial. They took only what they needed and shared all that they did not. It was just the obvious and natural way of life. Receive these understandings of living in intimate relationship with the land and life around you. Receive from them the experience of living with very little in the way of possessions, yet very much in the way of connection and place and trust in receiving what they needed. 
There is vast ingenuity and creativity in your lineage. Your ancestors learned to control fire, built shelters for themselves, invented tools and musical instruments. They birthed languages and songs and dances, stories and ceremonies and art. They adorned themselves with clothing, paints, flowers, feathers, jewelry. Feel this ingenuity and creativity alive throughout your lineage. Feel it alive within you. Your ancestors have been voyagers, traveling distances large and small into the unknown, some responding to a calling and new opportunities, some forced, compelled by hunger, natural forces, violence. About 220,000 years after we began our journey forward in time from the dawn of Homo sapiens, people began to migrate out of Africa. Over the span of millennia, some of their descendants continued that migration, some arriving as far as Australia about 40,000 years ago, others entering Europe around the same time, others reaching all the way to the Americas some 20,000 years ago. Some of your ancestors were part of this long, extended journey. Others experienced sudden, massive upheavals, such as the more than 10 million who were enslaved in Africa and forced to the Americas. Receive from your ancestors their deep knowing of how to create a new life in new places and new circumstances. How to move forward in a world full of vast possibility and pain. Receive from them an appreciation for the roots that connect us with our past and for those put down anew. Your ancestors have known the depths of joy and love in all their forms. They pass down to you these essences that you may remember them and recognize them and draw them to you. Your ancestors have also known the depths of violence and disregard. They do not pass these on to you raw, undistilled. They pass on to you their stories of what they saw and experienced wrapped in the greatest of tenderness and care for you and themselves. With deep respect, they tuck these stories into your heart and the marrow of your bones. These stories are gifts. They have the power to open a greater depth of feeling in you and a more spacious heart. They come with a greater ability to hear and see other people's pain and to recognize people's capacity for violence. And they come with a greater ability in you to tend to both wounds and threats. Among your ancestors are people who have done the worst of things. They passed on their pain, alienation, and afflictions in terrible ways. There are gifts here as well. To open to this part of your ancestry is to open to the possibility of greater humility and empathy, a stronger motivation to be a source of light in the world, and a deeper appreciation for the medicines of redemption, forgiveness, and love. Among your ancestors, have also been some of the most compassionate and caring of people. They have been there for other people, other creatures, the earth, sometimes with a quiet tenderness, sometimes with a roaring ferocity. Your ancestors saved lives. Some of your ancestors gave their own lives. Receive from these ancestors their deep wells of compassion and commitment, 
the pull inside you to kindness, reverence, attention, action. And now, let's pause for a moment. Let's draw close to one of your ancestors from around 10,000 years ago, without even needing to know where or who they are or what they're doing. Just pause to be with them a moment. Consider the preciousness of this person and the preciousness of this single moment in their life. The vastness of the world and universe around them. The vastness of time before and after them. And the vastness within this person. Consider this person's immense complexity and humanity, the people and places in their life, the vast range of joys and pains and hopes and fears. Take in this moment and this person, knowing that your story is connected with theirs. Now stay with this person, but pull back and feel that moment multiplied by all of the moments over the span of that person's lifetime. Feel yourself a witness to and holder of the sacredness of this person's life. And now, feel that life multiplied by all of your ancestors who were alive at the same time and then multiplied by each generation of your ancestors. Feel yourself a witness to and holder of the sacredness of each of these beings and feel all of them alive within you. As we resume our journey forward through time, feel yourself drawing closer to your own time until we are just a dozen or so generations out from your own, nearing the birth of people whose names you may have heard, people whose stories you may have heard parts of. And let's pause one more time. Consider for a moment if there is a gift or two in particular from your ancestors that you would like to wish for yourself, for this child yet to be born some knowledge, or traits, or lived experiences of your ancestors that you want to specifically distill or amplify for this being whose time is near, something you believe could be particularly helpful for this being, for you. Call to mind what these specific gifts are then cast them forward in time. Feel yourself in this timeless place casting them forward. And now, feel them arriving inside your body, having found you, taking root, blossoming, here for you to draw on. And let's continue forward again arriving into the time of your great-grandparents, and now your grandparents, and now the people who would be your parents and significant people in your life, biological and otherwise, these children who would eventually bring you into the world, the people who would care for you. Feel all of those lines and years of ancestors going back to first life, coming together in just these few people. And now, feel them all come together in one person, in you. Move forward into the time of your life the newest in this long family. Move forward through the years of your childhood, your adolescence, 
your adulthood. Now into the past year, the past month, the last day, the dawning of this morning. And now arrive back to yourself, to your body, to this present moment, going no further than noticing your next breath. And now feel your breath and feel every one of your ancestors taking this next breath with you. Feel your ancestors with you in every movement and thought. Feel this ocean within you, which is all of your ancestors and all of their lives, sacred, profound. Feel all of your ancestors, human and beyond, holding you in the same deep honoring and sacred witnessing you brought to them. Feel them honoring the vastness of your being and this moment, the complexity, the miracle, the beauty of you. Feel their love, their compassion, their gratitude for you. Take a moment and in any way that feels right to you, acknowledge your ancestors and express your gratitude for them, for all who came before you, hundreds of millennia of human ancestors and beyond them, the primates, the mammals, on and on to the single celled, to first life, and beyond them to this planet, the stars, the universe, all of them your ancestors, all here, all part of you. When you are ready, we are going to do one more thing. Take a moment to think about the children in your life perhaps your own children or other children in your family, children in your neighborhood or in your friends' families. Now consider for a moment all the children in the world today. And now consider the cascade forward in time of their children and their children. Include in this circle all of the non-human beings that are yet to come into the world as well, and their children, generations after generations. Now feel yourself part of the family of all these future beings' ancestors. You no longer looking back at your ancestors, feeling them within you, but you standing with them, of them looking forward. You are an ancestor to all of these future beings who will inhabit this miraculous world. Now feel all of the gifts alive within you that were shared with you. Without giving any of them up for yourself, without diminishing any of them, only adding to them the richness of who you are and what you have lived, I invite you to cast them forward to all of the beings throughout the expanse of time who will follow you, along with your blessings, prayers, reverence, love.
Now sit quietly, still. Feel your ancestors in you. Feel yourself and these blessings alive in all the beings yet to come. Standing at the kitchen window one day and looking out at where a path wound under some maple trees, I suddenly saw the scene with a freshness and clarity that I'd never seen before. Simultaneously, as though for the first time, I fully realized I was not only on the earth, but of it, an intimate part and product of it. It was as if a door had briefly opened. I stood there transfixed. I remember thinking, distant places on the map, such as Tibet and North Africa, are extensions of right here, all interrelated. Flora Courtois